This video is about portholes and, uh, and in the end making your own. So this is a, a 50 foot hull, uh, new hull only purchase and uh, I wanted to make this very thermally efficient so portholes and I was coming up with prices cheap as I get was about from near just on a 500 quid a porthole and the design was not good so I wasn't happy with it so what we're doing is we're making our own and show you around how I've done that. So these are standard 18 inch holes of a cut in the boat which would take a standard porthole on there and I've put in there a double glazed pack and so that's a standard uh, UPVC type house window uh, that would normally uh, be fitted in houses and the cost of it is quite cheap I'm paying uh, 20 pounds it's coming out uh, per window for the glass alone but what it does give me is it gives me the thermal brakes I'm looking for because of course um, I've got no metal frame uh, and when I went in to do it having stuff with thermal brakes the price gets hideous uh, no ventilation because I'm having a managed ventilation system within the boat so although it's got the doors and it's going to have its standard breather system in there um, I've not opted for portholes that open. Uh, let's go inside and I can show you how I've done this um, um, and go from there. Uh, so, uh, we'll speak here if we, if we, from the inside, a bit difficult with the lighting, but here's what you can see. Is there's my standard glazing pack that's been fitted on there. And the basic thing on there is that I've used a technique to seal it using mastic butyl strips. And the stuff we're using on there is called, called flex strip. And I've come across it, I just built a house and the windows are sealed to wooden frames with this uh, compound and uh, it's been in three years, it's, it's absolutely superb, it's a nice seal. But there's a few things, one is, of course, the interface here has got to be clean when you put it on and I've opted for, we've got two pack primer on the outside of the boat and I've extended that around to the inside of the boat. It's really important because the butyl won't bond terribly well to conventional sort of lead-based or zinc-based paints and this is an epoxy resin and of course it glues and bonds really tight. Basically when you fit the window you need to get it right because you're never going to get the window out again without breaking or break cutting through the seal and it's quite difficult. I've tried on my how, how to uh, put skylights in with it and it was a disaster. I could not get up, put it down in the wrong place and it was not coming. So how I fix them, I've used connector studs, those are familiar with threaded rods, we know these connector studs, there's an M6 on here, and they're 18 millimetres long, and I've just cleaned them off ready for welding on, because they're welded onto the hull, and you can see here, there's one in there, you can see that, and I'll show you the one top of the movie. So you can see there it is, spot welder onto the hull. Then I've got a rubber washer on here to uh, exert a force onto here uh, to keep the glass compressed against the butyl seal on there. When I come to put it in permanently, I will need a thread lock to do that. And these are just simply made up devices. All I've used is just a, a, a gutter bolt, plastic washer, and a nut. And of course, that packs out because that's 16 in the width of my pack, because I've got four millimeters glass. 16 millimeter space of argon gas and then another four millimeter glass so it just fits in there snug as a bug and clamps that up there um, ever so easy to fit i haven't fitted these ones yet because i've got to wait seven days for the actual uh, uh, epoxy resin to finish curing so i've got to wait for, for, for that period of time before i can fit the windows on there fitting this stuff is easy because all i've done is to copy the wind See on that, there's the diameter of the window there, and you can see here. So I've spaced the studs 10 millimeters bigger than the glass pack on the corners on there, and then I put a line through there so I can get a date and so I can put a spirit level on there to get that level. And what I do is I offer that up to the window hole. like such, and go around the outside, make sure the circle's concentric with the window hole, mark it clean it, spot weld it in place, job done. Take it away, and then of course my window pack will fit on that. How successful will it be? I don't know, but we're willing to give it a go. And of course with this thing is that uh, I have an of the window holes, so if I need to go back and it's, it's a complete disaster, I can put a stand-up uh, portholes in, in there.
Just a word of interest on that, often your boat with the, with the portholes are not beautifully concentrically round, so they don't need to be because they have trims on there and I'm not having trims on mine. So what that's done on there is I've smoothed that, but to do that, simply use these flap wheels, so they are, these ones here, just emery paper wheels that fit onto the angle grind. And I spent a lot of time marking, but actually, in fact, the way to do it is with your hand. Your fingers can pick up tiny imperfections if it raises, rises or falls away. And it's very easy, very satisfying. You just sit there, and you just simply flat out the windows to get them perfectly round. And to be fair, they don't have to be 100% round, uh, as long as they look round from a distance, uh, that, that, that's all that matters on, on there. So that's the process that, that we're, we're, we're going to give a try. And of course, as I said, I'm buying these glass packs in, they're coming in at just under 20 quid uh, from a, a, a company in Cheltenham who will make them for me to my specifications on there. And you can have them hard and tough and tinted, whatever you want to do. But it's a, a fairly low cost way of progressing with the build um, on there. But it does mainly what I want is this thermal thing, the whole bit about the boat to be a success is it needs to be thermally efficient and that's uh, the, the way I can do that. Regards to the filleting, I'm not going to put a fillet in there, is, is that that'll be a black mastic or black butyl tape I've bought to go around the windows and I, when I've got one fitted for permanent I can show you up on an updated video. Again, I've got to improvise a window liner that's going to fit on there, that's the right down to bring it out flush with the, with, with the insulation and the, and the wood finish on there, but I shall find something that will do that uh, reasonably well. Anyway, uh, enjoy. Well, Ad, I did try um to fill what would be effectively if the glass pack sits against the edge here where my finger is to fill the thickness of the hull which is uh, five millimeters i think with a circular port hole to make it totally flush on the outside and i perfected the art of cutting circular pieces of glass brilliant and uh, but there you go when i tried it on to try it in position which fits into there actually i think it was rubbish compared to slightly recessed glass sticking out so although that does the job actually I don't like it so after that I've decided to go just for the flat packs that are in there and you may ask why is there a cut out in that one well that's ventilation uh, that's part of the learning curve not how to, not to cut the circles in glass but uh, we've finally got this sorted but unfortunately it's one of those skills probably never use again but hey ho good fun